All right, welcome to Pints of Interest yet again. We have a wonderful beer today that we've been looking forward to trying and are finally getting that chance. You may also notice we're a little bit brighter because we have some new lights that we're messing around with to try to brighten things up a little bit. So we'll we'll see how that works. We're gonna have to adjust it over a period of time. So if we happen to be blindingly white, then our apologies. I'll try to adjust that in post. Uh, Alright, so what we are doing today is one from Firestone, which is a becoming a brewer we really look forward to trying their beers. Uh, very good from the ones that we've had so far. And today we're trying Wookie Jack, their unfiltered black rye IPA. Um, what we're going to be sampling it in today, uh, the tulip glass is the glass that should be used for this particular beer. Um, black IPAs can be a little kind of tough, they kind of straddle a couple different lines as far as what they could go in. So we went with the Tulip as recommended by Firestone on their website. This is what they display the beer in. Uh, we'll also be using a snifter for this one. And then of course we have the base stout pint glass. So we're going to try these three glasses and be right back with how we feel about this beer. See you later. Wookie Jack is brewed by Firestone Walker. It's technically an American black ale. It cost us $9.99 with a suggested retail of $5.99. Its ABV is 8.3%. The glassware we went with a snifter, tulip, or pint. The serving temperature is around 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We actually had this a little bit warmer at 53 degrees, and it's available year round. All right, we're gonna do a quick reaction to the aroma of this black beauty here. I'm gonna go ahead and sniff it. Yeah, that's grassy. Oh. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that's a potent one, so <clears throat> definitely you don't have to worry about how strong the aroma is there or it clinging to the size of the glass, the lacing or anything like that. All very well, nice creamy kind of tan around that. It's very deceptive. Very uh, the aroma that color needs to uh, yes. send to the color. So we just colors. wanted to get the reaction to that, so we're just gonna go ahead and keep on trying. <laughs> Alright, so we're back from giving this one a try. Um, but some interesting taste profile for this beer as well that we got from the three different glasses here. And as usual, we're gonna start with our kind of base uh, go-to glass here, is the stout glass here, and Tom to see what he thought of the beer in the stout glass. To me, it had a like a mild, sweet uh, malt uh, or rye, again, in there, um, along with the bitterness and sharpness of the hops. Because of the higher ABV, I was able to detect that in the end. I got a nice, sort of mild, alcoholic warmth. Um, for the tulip here, which is the one that they suggest that you serve it in, I got kind of the same aroma thing, just like times 10. Like when I first smelled this, it was like, oh my god, it was a punch in the face of that really, really grass, um, almost cat piss kind of smell to it, which was actually described by uh, someone else who doesn't really drink beer. That was the first thing they said about it. So I don't want to say that as like a negative, like, oh dear god, it smelled the most rancid <laughs> thing ever or anything like that, but it's this really, really grass smell with this like citric acid kind of burn in there. And then that little undercurrent is sweet, like Tom said. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the taste was concerned in this, I thought it was it was kind of like a, a malty beginning and then kind of, it was just a dank rye taste to it, this rye grain bitter finish to it that for me was kind of a turnoff. I think it was this toasted rye kind of taste. I don't care for that particular flavor. Somebody's going to go ahead and talk about the snifter? Yeah, snifter wise, um, overall I kind of agree with Drew in that there's for me, something a little off-putting about the combination of the hot bitterness and the rye graininess together. Mm -hmm. it, it combines in kind of an odd way. Of these three, which do you think, oh, you know your favorite was the Snifter. Yeah, I enjoyed the Snifter. For this the one. Three. I think I actually agree with the Snifter yep. and Ryan as well. Now, I think you can get away with either of these two, obviously. If you really want to taste this and you really like black IPAs, black rye IPAs specifically, you're gonna to wanna to go with the tulip because you're really gonna to wanna to have those get flavors enhanced and really get that taste going and this one does that the best by far. 
Now, if you don't necessarily like those flavors coming together, this still gives you a nice flavor profile of what the beer offers, but does so in a less aggressive way. Which I think is why at least we went for the snifter and Tom has his reasons. He said you did like the beer itself. I did. Um, one thing that we can say before we talk about the beer review specifically is that I think we could all agree this is better to serve on the warmer side. We noticed as we were trying it and it got a chance to warm up a little bit, some of the other flavors came out more. How do you think we felt about this beer overall? Uh, I know, Tom, that you said that you probably liked it the best out of all of mm -hmm. us, so where do you think this would kind of fall for you? I'm, I would recommend it. However, um, I think because it is a black uh, IPA and a rye, a black rye IPA, I would go more on the um, try it if. Uh, you've already had experience with IPAs at a sort of a higher alcohol um, is, and want to venture out into what um, the blacks have to offer. Okay. Uh, Ryan, what do you think this would uh, pick for you? I would have to say, still on the try if, but probably on the lower side. Uh, for me, I just didn't quite enjoy the, the way the rye mustiness and the hops bitterness came together, uh, particularly towards the middle finish. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess overall, I wouldn't be like, oh god, I can't even drink that if you tried to serve it to me, but I can't say it's one I would seek out again. Yeah, I, I just about completely agree with Ryan. I definitely think this is a try if, if you like this style of beer, you like rice, you like black IPAs, 100%, give this one a try. I think it's a, a very interesting, adventurous example of this kind of thing. I wouldn't necessarily say difficult, but it's something for someone who has a palate that really appreciates those flavors in there, I think this is a great example of this style of beer. I think just personally, I'm not that big of a fan of this style, but I understand people who would be. Someone told me that Wookie Jack is fantastic for them, and they just really love that grassiness and that the, the rye that's in there and everything. I'd be like, okay, I completely understand that. They you know, probably like black IPAs. Like <laughs> yeah, I completely understand that, and yeah, I get it. So this, I think, is a firm try if uh, kind of thing, just at different degrees <laughs> of the try of scale. You should try this beer if you like black IPAs that are musty and dank, you like bold, complex flavors, and you happen to like a heap of rye on rye bread with a side of rye. Rye. Yeah, definitely black IPAs go for it. If you haven't had a black IPA before, I'd try something a little bit lower on the complexity scale as far as the taste is concerned. The 21st Amendment, Back in Black. Black in Black, yes. was a black IPA that we re recently had in the can that was, a, that was a good one. I think it was a good example of the genre. It wasn't as complex as this, but I think that's a great place to start. It would be 21st Amendment, Back in Black, if you can find it. If you want to try some, some black IPAs and do a decent one that's not going to overly challenge your palate, but will be enjoyable and tasty. Mm -hmm. All right. So, for Firestone Walker's Wookie Jack and Pints of Interest, I say. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. That's terrible.